Hey everyone, how's it going? Omni here with the next uh, video in the Omnification of Sagero. Today we'll be adding another one of my Omnified systems, the Predator System. What is the Predator System? Well, you might not be surprised to hear this, but it is yet another game neutral system that will provide a uh, smart speed hack for enemies. It will also not surprise you to hear that we will be doing a video specifically on the topic of the Predator System. Basically all we'll go over today is what it will do, what it looks like when it's plugged in, and what we need to do in order to hook it up. In summary, when the game has the Predator System hooked up to it, enemies will move faster to kill you. The rate at which enemies move varies based on what area of influence the enemy falls into. So at the end of this video, we'll have a game where the enemies the Sekiro move quicker, and thus they will be able to deliver divine death to your face quicker as well. So to start out, we need to know where to plug in the Predator System. Just like it was with the Apocalypse System, it's going to be in a location where certain maths are being calculated. Specifically, it's where the math for an update to the player's location is being performed. That is the place in code where it knows you want to move a certain distance and it's going to add that distance to your coordinates before updating your current coordinates to reflect that new location. Finding the uh, maths for where the character's uh, update location is can be along the same difficulty as with the damage maths. Um, many times though it is much more difficult. Let's take a look and see where the player's uh, coordinates get updated in this game. Here's our current uh, cheat table for the game Sekiro. You can see my coordinates right here. So as I move, it shouldn't surprise you, they will update. Look at that, they updated. Let's right click on one of the coordinates and choose find out what writes this address. Here we go, we have a single function writing to the coordinates. Unfortunately, it's consistently writing to the coordinates. That can be a bit of a problem, it makes things a little less clear. Let's move the character around and see if there's another function that's going off that only goes off when the character moves. Nope, there is not. This is the one and only function that updates the player's coordinates. It seems to be constantly going off, and if there's a change to the coordinates, this is where it will update them. Let's take a look at the code. Here's the code going off when it's uh, updating our coordinates. It looks like the new coordinates for the character are going to be in the XMM6 register. It's going to move them in an aligned fashion to our current coordinates. So this will update the X, the Y, and the Z coordinates all at once. So XMM6 is going to contain the updated coordinates, so let's figure out what is writing to XMM6. Let's see if we can do it by eyeball first. Scrolling up just a little bit, we can see uh, something writing to the XMM6 register right here, XMM0. XMM0 is being multiplied by XMM2 which is itself a product of subtracting itself from maximum six. Interesting and a little confusing. Let's put a breakpoint right here and see what these look like. Here's a value of maximum zero uh, for this. It's one, two is zero. Interesting. And maximum six appears to be what might be the thing's current coordinates. Let's uh, hit run a few times and see what happens. This seems to be consistently one here. XMM0 might very well be a uh, speed multiplier for the creature. It seems to be coming from the location structure of that creature. So let's see what values we see here when it's hooked up to break uh, for the player's location being updated and um, while the player's moving. To do this, I'm going to switch back to the game and I have a hotkey set, sh uh, shift and equals, that will resume execution, basically hitting this run button. I'm gonna spam that hotkey and I'm gonna move the character forward. I'm gonna see if there's any changes captured here. Let's just look at the current values here. XMM6 has the character's current coordinates here. So it looks like the way that this would be changed is if, is if XMM0 was set to something. XMM0 is currently set to one, but then it gets multiplied by two. So we're gonna see if XMM2 contains the change to the coordinates. So we're moving the character now. Okay, let's take a look at what this looks like now. As we can see here, the XMM2 register now has a non-zero value. This only started to occur when I started moving. It does look like the XMM2 register contains the changes that are to be applied to the coordinates. This means we have located the maths 
or the update location. Therefore, we're gonna to wanna to plug in the predator system here. The predator system takes in a number of uh, parameters, such as the current coordinates for the creature, the proposed change to the coordinates for the creature, and it's gonna return, most importantly, an updated set of changes to the coordinates of the creature. So essentially, since this is supposed to make the creature move faster, the changes it's gonna return are gonna be increased. So the creature will move a greater distance per tick. So here is where we're gonna put in the um, initiation for the predator system. Xmm2 contains the uh, change to the coordinates, and that's what we're gonna be screwing with here. And RSI contains the base uh, structure for the location of the creature. Let's uh, get to work then on adding the hook. Let's add a hook into this code then. We're gonna do a full injection here, of course. And here's our template. Let's process this hook to be a bit more omnible. This uh, initiates the predator system. Omnifire predator hook. And the uh, executable is secure.exe. There's the address we're injecting into. And pasting in the bytes we're, we'll be replacing. This will initiate the predator system. And the no-op here is just one. Looks good. Let's throw in the original code here. Maximum two will be set to the movement coordinates. Movement essentially means this contains the change that will be applied to the creature's coordinates. Movement. RSI contains the uh, location struct of the creature moving. And this looks good. Let's paste the uh, predator initiation hook into their, our code. I'll place it right underneath the apocalypse system initiation. There it is. Let's put the cleanup code into the cleanup area. All right, that hook is now inserted into the code. All right, so here is where we're gonna actually execute the predator system. So before we can execute it, we need to copy it on over from my library of common Omnified assembly functions. Let's do that right now. There we go, that's all in place. Now we just need to call the predator system. So what is involved in calling the predator system? Let's take a look at the uh, parameters that the main predator system function requires. It's a little bit more complicated than what the apocalypse system requires. Here it is, and yes, it's a doozy. The first parameter is the player's X coordinate then the player's Y coordinate, then the Z coordinate, followed by the enemy's X, Y, and Z coordinate. Then we need to provide the enemy's height scale, enemy's width scale, and then depth scale. And then finally, we need to provide the movement coordinates. So we're able to provide values for all these parameters, except for the enemy height, width, and depth scale. We still need to figure out where those are in the game. So let's do that now. Hey guys, we're back to implementing the predator system. It's actually a few days later now, the last thing we did was go off on a quest to find where the scale properties are for the character, specifically uh, the scaling that's applied to the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Most games in their location or physics structure have alongside the coordinate floating points, uh, a floating point that is the multiplicative scale of that coordinate, X scale, Y scale, Z scale. That is most games. I think due to the fact that it is a custom engine, from software engine, as well as other reasons, uh, does not have a simple to find scale variable. So I spent quite a lot of time trying to figure out how to make the character tall or wider, fatter. Because not only is the scale required for the predator system, we're gonna need it for the boundification system. As much as I've learned, you know, during these, uh, during this half year or so of uh, doing omnification, I still must admit that game design and development is an area of computer development that I am probably the least familiar with. A slightly younger Omnify and Omni would probably give up on the quest to find the scale if you couldn't find one easily available. And I did find a way to uh, change the quote unquote scale of the character. Essentially I needed to create my own scaling variable. And that topic is gonna to be covered in more detail during the boundification implementation of this game. We don't need to copy it uh, in this video because 
the scale parameter required by the predator system is used for the purposes of calculating speed, in particular the uh, scaled speed. But that only matters if the game is using true scale. That's a term I've made up. What is a true scale? True scale is if I increase the size of the creature, so they're huge, a uniform, equal increase across all axes, that creature should actually be able to cover more distance in a shorter amount of time. They have a longer leg stride. I strongly believe that although we will be screwing with the scale of creatures in this game with the bonification system, I don't think it'll affect speed. Therefore, it doesn't matter as far as the predator system is concerned. We're simply just gonna pass a matrix of all ones. Basically, an identity matrix. So the very first set of parameters that we need to pass in order to call the main predator function are the player's coordinates. X, Y, Z. So let's load those first. Because the EAX, EBX, and ECX registers will be return values, we're gonna to wanna to back them up before we call the function, since we want to restore all registers to their previous states before our hook is done executing. We're gonna back up RX, RRBX, and RCX. Also remember, the predator function is for enemies. So if the location struct being operated on here is the player's struct, we actually don't want to call the predator system. Much like the apocalypse system, I'm going to add something that will be specifically for the player in the future, but not right now. We'll just have it as a separate part of this function. That means we want to compare RSI to the known player chords pointer. If they're equal, we bail out. So we can use RIX as a temporary holder for the player chords pointer. Let's see if the location structure being operated upon is the same as the player coordinate structure. So if the location structure of the coordinates being modified is the same as the players, we want to bail out of here. But as we can see here, this would screw up the stack, right? Because we need to pop these back. So let's move this outside of our little region of preservation. Out to here. We're gonna do all our checks out here. We're gonna have to do numerous pushing and popping. But this isn't a very safe thing to do either, is it? What if the player chords pointer hasn't been initialized yet? Which is very possible. Typically where the predator initiation hook goes is a function of code that is called a lot. And it's typically multi-threaded as well. So we should expect that any pointer we do reference created in another hook may not yet be initialized. So I'll do another push pop here. And we'll just check if it's initialized. This points to nothing, then we want to get out of here as well. All right, at this point, we should be good to go. Let's move um, to REX, the address of the player chords pointer. That's sort of the actual address, the player coordinates structure, into the RBX register. The very first set of parameters that we pass to the predator function are the X, Y, and Z coordinates for the player. So as we know, the X coordinate will start at the offset 80. So we're going to push RBX plus 80. Now when we push an assembly, um, we're gonna be pushing eight bytes at a time. So that's gonna be the X and Y. We also need to push that Z coordinate. That's gonna be located at RBX plus 88. So that'll be the X, Y, and Z coordinates push to the stack. The next parameters that we need to pass are the enemy's X, Y, and Z coordinate. So this will be stored in that RSI register. So we simply push, just like the player coordinates, RSI plus 80 for the X and Y, and then we push RSI plus 88 to get that the Z coordinate. Next up, we got that lovely uh, scale matrix. Because of reasons I discussed earlier, we're gonna be basically passing it an identity matrix here. It will basically consist of one, one, and one, and then a zero. 
So let's just uh, use an SSC register, set the uh, lower vector to one, and then we'll just broadcast it to all the other vectors. It should be okay if there's an extra one in the last vector. So let's back up an SSC register. Also, we should be backing up the conditional flags. Let's use the XMM0 register. Let's actually, uh, let's actually move it down here, right outside where we're backing up the registers that will be used in the return value. And we'll restore it right after we pop these guys back. I need to allocate a new uh, bit of memory here. Just to store the value for a floating point of 1.0. I guess I could just use the hex value, but whatever. Let's clean that up. All right, we'll uh, set up this little identity matrix here. Set the lower vector of this uh, SSE register to be a one. And we'll just uh, broadcast it. So all the vectors will have the same value. So we're gonna wanna push the entire 16 bytes of the SSE register. So uh, in order to pass this to the stack as a parameter, we're gonna wanna subtract uh, 10 or 16 bytes from the stack. Then we'll just throw the entire contents of this register onto the stack. There we go, that's now armed as the third parameter. Last parameter, we need to uh, pass the change to the enemy's coordinates, which is gonna be found in uh, maximum two. I like movement offsets much better. They're the movement offset values for the coordinates. So we're gonna pass that as the fourth parameter. Make room for another 16 bytes. And then we'll just plop the contents of the movement offsets to the stack. And we'll call execute predator. And we've hooked into the predator system. Okay, now that we've executed the predator system, um, we'll have the updated uh, movement offsets stored in the REX, RBX, and RCX registers. So we basically need to get those values and throw them all into the packed uh, SSC register here, XMM2. I'm going to make room for a full 16 bytes on the stack. I'm gonna move um, the updated uh, X offset to the top of it. Move the updated uh, Y offset towards the top of it, plus four bytes. And then throw the updated uh, offset to the Z coordinates. And we're gonna do a move unaligned, uh, packed, uh, single precision scalar, blah, 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 by, from the stack to XMM2. I think that'll work. And thus we have the updated change to the coordinates loaded. Well, let's see if this works right now. Hey everybody, how you doing? Well, it looks like uh, our new code was crashed in the game. Um, let's, let's see how we can fix that. After reviewing the code a bit, there's a few things I was doing wrong. First of all, we needed to uh, pop our conditional flags. Uh, I was pushing them here, but I forgot to pop them, so that's one big problem. And then the other thing he, uh, was here, I was making room on the stack to store the return variables, or values and uh, then we would load it from the stack onto the SSC register. These were the uh, change to coordinates, but I uh, forgot to restore the stack to how it was before doing that. So where there's a subtract, we need to have an add. So let's see if it runs now. So we're gonna see if the predator code works now or if it still crashes the game. Oh dear. Well, the kid seemed to have disappeared. Everyone seems to disappear. Whoa. 
he's dead. <laughs> oh my god. Somehow I killed an unkillable player character. Okay. Well, it looks like we might still have some issues. Well, let's take a look and see what's happening. My suspicion would be that there's some issues with the return values. Uh, that the predator function is generating, or the way that I'm handling them, which is making them move when they shouldn't be moving. The breakpoint here. And then we're going to enable the code. Let's step into our code here. Let's put a breakpoint right after the call to the execute predator. Let's see what our parameters are. Here's the uh, current uh, states of the XMIM registers after the functions have been executed. Let's see what our updated XMIM2 register looks like after we're done executing the code here. That's going to contain the uh, updated movement offsets. Okay, as you can see here, th there was initially no movement going on with this character, but somehow we're getting this negative 32.56 in the uh, end there. So this value right here is probably a something that's been left over on the stack. Anyway, we don't want this to be there. Oh, he's still dead. Here we are back in the code. This is where we're uh, basically loading everything onto the stack and onto the uh, SSE register. Let's just um, do this. This is a very sort of cheap way to clear uh, these values, but um, I'm just gonna clear what's in the uh, XMM2 register. And then I'm gonna move that to the stack. I should clear 16 bytes worth of data, and then um, we should be able to write to that, load it back, and that last spot will be free of any kind of value. Let's save those changes. I'm gonna just kill the character real quick so everybody's alive again. Then we're gonna load it back into this. All right, gotta test out this code a little bit. There's some uh, additional issues causing problems. We weren't providing the uh, changes to the coordinates to the function correctly. It's designed so that when you pass the uh, movement coordinates on the stack that you're doing it from uh, memory. So you push eight bytes and another eight bytes. It wasn't designed to take 128 bits worth of data. So instead what I do is I just take the SSC register which contains the uh, movement offset which is XMM2. I just move the, uh, the high words to XMM0 so they're at the bottom of it, high to low. And then I just uh, move one quad word of XMM2 to the stack, then I move a quad word of XMM0, which contains the upper portion. So then in memory, you'll see, if you look at the stack, it'll display the uh, what were previously the, the high quad words and then the low quad word. Let's first uh, see what the game looks like without the predator system. We're gonna have one of the enemies uh, run towards me here, okay. Is running towards me. You all saw that, right? All right. Now we're gonna see what it's like to have them running at you with the predator system enabled. So they're gonna move faster by default, and then they're gonna get faster and faster as they get towards me. As you can see, it's a much faster <laughs> approach by these guys. They really gun towards you. Much faster. <laughs> oh my god. Oops. Well, hello there. It's really hard to keep these guys off your butt. <laughs> Did that guy die? Sekiro now has the predator system enabled. And, uh, should make the game a living hell. If you want to catch us live, see the live gameplay, don't forget, follow my stream, twitch.tv slash omni. That's where it all goes down, baby. And we're going to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Give the video a like. Leave a comment if you learned something. Or if it went completely over your head, that's okay too. Say hi. Bye-bye.